what's good y'all your boy ross back at it again with another video so we're gonna check out seven wcw jobbers who became wwe world champions this should be an interesting video man definitely want to uh see who are some of the jobbers that became champs uh the first one i can automatically think of is jericho uh i don't think jericho was a top guy in wcw don't actually remember no i don't i don't think people considered him a top guy but when he came over to wwe to beat stone cold and the rock at the same in the same night to become the champ hey that's a that's a that's a big step up from where you were to beating stone cold and the rock in the same night that's two of the arguably two of the largest people in wrestling at the time you beat them in the same night that's something big so we're gonna check that out appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on the channel man let's get right into this Names like Chris Jericho, the Giants, and the Radicals all shocked the system when they joined the WWF, and WCW's foundations were rocked by the arrivals of Lex Luger, Bret Hart, and the New World Order. All of these names were big stars when they joined their new homes, but did you know that some of the most famous faces in WWE history were once completely faceless in WCW? I'm Cypher Watt, and these are seven WCW jobbers who became WWE World Champions. Number seven, Rob Van Dam. Before he was changing, I believe Stone Cold is one of he. He was in WCW before Bischoff let him go, and then I think he went to ECW for a little bit. But yeah, he was in WCW for a little bit, and then he became the biggest, one of the biggest wrestlers of all time. In the game in ECW, Rob Van Dam was changing his name for WCW, calling himself Robbie V. The whole effing show made his WCW wow. debut in January 1993 and wrestled a handful of matches for the promotion over the next Damn, six months. Wow. Although he won a few of these bouts, he was mostly used to put over names like Paul Orndorff and the Barbarian. He would also clash with the Hollywood Blondes as part of a tag team match and once tag go with future ECW star Raven under his Scotty Flamingo persona. Following WCW, Van Damme would float around the Indies and Japan for a while and then of course end up in extreme championship wrestling mm -hmm. and make a huge name for himself. This led him to being signed by the WWE in 2001 and five years later he would beat John Cena to become WWE champion Great at moment. ECW One Night Stand 2006. Great a guy moment. like Van Damme was probably not going to reach the main event somewhere like WCW. His high flying offense and agility made him a perfect fit for the Cruiserweight division but this was definitely as high as he was going to go. And mm -hmm. if we know one thing about RVD, it's that he likes being yeah. high. Oh, for nice. Sure. Number six, AJ Styles. AJ Styles, the man who helped revolutionize American wrestling throughout the 2000s and the owner of the Karenist haircut to ever Karen, <laughs> was indeed a member of the WCW roster in 2001. What? The one wrestling under the name Air Styles teamed up with Air Paris to form Air Raid because WCW naming schemes were pretty trash. They wrestled four matches in the that. promotion wow. and lost three of them, with their one victory coming over Alex Wright and Disco Inferno, so don't feel too bad for them. Their highest profile match was in the first round of a tournament to crown the first ever WCW Cruiserweight Tag Team Champions. They fought eventual winners Elix Damn, Skipper look at and the Kid Romeo on Nitro, losing in five and a half minutes. After the company was bought out by the WWF, Styles turned to the independent circuit and established himself as one of the best wrestlers in the world, especially during his stint in TNA. Mm -hmm. He debuted for WWE at the 2016 Royal Rumble Which to much awesome. aplomb and has been WWE Champion twice since then. Considering he spent so long on the other side, aka TNA, everyone was worried that styles would be treated like dirt when he joined the wwe but he's been extremely well they treated him at that time they treated him really good they treated him great uh as a late he's starting to get back into his rhythm but hopefully hopefully we can get him back into the title picture scene soon yeah presented since his arrival and they haven't made him wrestle disco inferno once which i'm sure he's grateful for number five kevin nash future wwf and wcw world champion kevin nash had a real rough go of it in his first run in atlanta he mm. first appeared for the company a tag team called the master blasters but all they were <laughs> masters of was losing matches he then went solo and took on his most infamous role oz Inspired by the Wizard of Oz, Nash dyed his hair silver, put on a long green curtain, and was managed by the Great Wizard, aka Kevin Sullivan with a pet monkey. And the act was as loony as it sounds, and it is remembered fondly That's today as awful. one of the most bizarre wrestling gimmicks of all time. That's Despite awful. being pushed fairly strongly as Oz, the character soon faded down the card because, well, I mean, look at it. Nash then had another rebrand, this time calling himself Vinny Vegas, before leaving the company in 1993 to join the WWF. Nash was immediately given a better deal, portraying 
the mm -hmm. tall menacing character of Diesel. In just over a year, Diesel won the WWF Championship from Bob Backlund and carried it for the next 12 months, proving that one company's trash can absolutely be another company's treasure. He would this eventually jump back to WCW, only this time wearing the black and white instead of green. Number 4. Edge Adam Copeland was previously wrestling in Canada as the hilariously named Sexton Hardcastle before he had his first <laughs> WCW match under the... I do not... That can't be real. Oh no, I gotta Google that. Sexton Hark, that cannot be real. No way, I'm Googling that. No way. Sexton Hart, no way. Wow, that was him. What the hell? That, wow. That was him. That's what he went by. Sexton Hardcastle. That's a real thing. I had to check because that just sounds so Now coming to the ring, Sexton Hardcastle. What? That's a porn star name, Edge. The name of Damon Stryker. Damon wrestled two matches on WCW Pro in early 96. One was against Kevin Sullivan, only this time he was performing as the Taskmaster and didn't have a monkey with him. The other was against Meng, who presumably beat up Copeland so bad that he left WCW and never came back. Later that same year, Copeland made his WWF debut as Edge. And mm -hmm. over the next 20 years, Edge would become one of the most decorated and beloved performers in the company's history. He would win two Royal Rumbles, become the first ever Money in the Bank briefcase holder, mm -hmm. retire for nine years and come back with one hell of a pop and would pick up 11 world championships yep. across his run. Number three, Triple H. Yes, the man who now runs WWE and who married into the most successful family in all of wrestling once performed under the name Terra Rising. First name Terra, <laughs> second name Rising. That sounds brilliant, isn't it? And if nothing else, it goes to show that WCW are terrible for Look naming at characters that. because Triple H's Terra Rising name was actually before his time at the company. So <laughs> WCW was awful with names. Triple H used to be called Terrorizing, bro. What are we talking? Who? Why? Who? I mean, Hunter Herms Helmsley, Herms Helmsley. It's a, it's a little bit better, but I, they they were able to spin that so much better into Triple H. You know, it, it works a little bit better than Terror Rising, bro. So, there you go. <laughs> Nevertheless, Mr. Rising had a dozen matches for WCW, including one for the television championship before he changed his name and character to Jean-Paul Lebec. Lebec mm -hmm. was a snooty French man who looked down on everyone he saw as beneath him. It was essentially a proto version John of the Hunter Hearst Helmsley gimmick. What yeah. followed was a whirlwind career. I didn't even know Triple that. H go from an upper class snob to a degenerate. I did not know it before it was Hunter Herms Helmsley. It was that. I did not know and that. And cerebral assassin to one of the most powerful figures in the company. Triple H was so prolific with his championship wins in WWE that it became a meme a long time ago, but he also won the best seat in the house, booking creative and head of talent relations. Yeah. Not bad for someone who started out as a jobber for the competition. This Number is two. True. Kane. Glenn Jacobs sure has had his fair share of gimmicks. Isaac Yankum, DDS, Fake Diesel, yeah, I, Doomsday, Unabom, and the Christmas Creature. One of his yeah, least drama phrases was a blinking <laughs> appearance on WCW Saturday night in 1993. As Bruiser Mastino, the future mayor Bruiser of Knox Mastino. County, Tennessee, faced off against one of the all-time greats, hair. the man called Sting. The mm -hmm. Stinger quickly dispatched of Mastino that night in Macon, Georgia, beating him with a scorpion deathlock in less than three minutes. After this defeat, Jacobs Jacobs was gone from WCW and Bruiser Mastino was never seen or heard from again. Good. Two years later, Jacobs turned up in the WWF as Unibom and began cycling through the characters we previously mentioned. Two mm -hmm. years after that, and almost five years after his loss to Sting, Jacobs made his first appearance as the character that would define his legacy, yep. Kane. As the Big Red Machine, Jacobs has won 19 different championships in WWE as well as the Money in the Bank briefcase. Wait, alright, so WWF champion, WWE, uh, 
uh, W World he uh, Heavyweight Champion, ECW Champion, two-time Intercontinental Champion, WWF Hardcore Champion, WWE 24-7 Champion, two-time WWE Tag Team Champion, nine-time World Tag Team Champion, 2010 Money in the Bank winner. Damn! I didn't know Kane was that super decorated. Holy! It's the fact that he was a nine-time World Tag Team Champ. That's Case crazy. Case in 2010. He also became a Hall of Famer in 2022, joining the man who beat him in WCW all those years ago. Mm -hmm. Number one, The Undertaker. Being a lower card wrestler in WCW... I'm surprised they didn't put Stone Cold in there. I mean, yeah, I'm surprised they didn't put Stone Cold in there. You would think that would be like the number or at least in the list. I mean, I guess Stone Cold wasn't considered really a jobber. Because he was part of a, a tag team at one point. So, you, I, I guess you could say he wouldn't. They're, I think they're only really going by just jobbers. Like, true jobbers. Like, getting squashed. Stone Cold technically wasn't a jobber. So, at the time. So, I get it. W clearly runs in the family because Kane's big brother was doing it years before he was. As mean Mark Callis, The Undertaker was part of a tag team called The Skyscrapers, who feuded with the Road Warriors in early 1990. The Skyscrapers became the Skyscrapers when Callis' partner Dan Spivey left WCW, and so mean Mark was left to go it alone. Managed by Paul E. Dangerously, better wow. known as Paul Heyman, which is a wild combination, Callis yeah. had some success as a singles wrestler. However, his confidence in WCW management began to falter when Booker Ole Anderson told him that he would never draw money as a performer. Uh, he stuck yeah, around a little that, while after this remark. And I definitely, uh, definitely, I think he checked out a video a while back of that, uh, that someone telling him that, like them talking about this exact situation. It's crazy. Say he would never be a draw and arguably one of the biggest draws in wrestling ever. Including a loss to Lex Luger in a US title match before seeking passages new in the WWF, and boy, did he find them. Yep. Debuting at that year's Survivor Series, The Undertaker would go on to have a wrestling career like no other. His five world championships are just a small part of his astonishing career, as it's safe to say that his commitment to kayfabe and outstanding matches have yep. made Vince McMahon a lot of money over the a years. Lot. And Ole Anderson absolutely ate all of his words. Yep. And that's the list. Let us know what you thought of this video. Yeah, he. He definitely, he definitely had to eat those words, bro. He became one of the biggest draws. At one point, people were only coming to WrestleMania to see who The Undertaker was going to beat and if anyone was going to beat the streak. That, it became a thing. So, but yeah, man, comment down below. Let me know. And that's crazy. I, I, I know before I get to the outro, I know I said Jericho. Jericho wouldn't, I guess Jericho wouldn't consider the jobber, but it's still, he came from WCW and became someone very huge same thing with eddie guerrero eddie guerrero was you know known in wcw but he came over and became very big in the uh in the um in wwe well it took time but he eventually got to that to that pinnacle peak before his uh untimely passing so but yeah comment down below let me know so what is your some of your favorite wrestlers that were in wcw that came over to wwe let me know down below but i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel man uh i love you guys so much we're almost done with 2022 and you guys have shown me so much love all all over the years and especially this year so thank you guys so much man your undisputed youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciates you and i appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace